Okay, so this is 6.1, which is slope fields and Euler's method and also differential equations. So there's a lot in 6.1. So I'm going to split this into multiple videos. So we're going to first start with differential equations. So that could be something that you've heard of before. There are entire classes in college dedicated to differential equations. We're not going to really do a whole lot with differential equations. Um, so I'll talk about the types of differential equations that you will see in this class because there are a lot of others that you will not see in this class. So an equation involving a derivative is called a differential equation. The order of a differential equation is the order of the highest derivative in the equation. You guys are only going to be seeing first order, meaning that you're only going to have ones that involve the first derivative. If you do have ones that involve a second derivative, it's going to be something really, really basic. Um, but for the most part, they are going to be first order differential equations. So here is an example of what it looks like. So usually the way that you see it is going to be dy dx equals something. Occasionally the equation is manipulated or is manipulated so that maybe the dy dx is not isolated. So you may need to move stuff around to isolate the dy dx. But for the most part, it's going to be something like this. So this is first order because this is the first derivative. So to solve a differential equation, if you are being asked to solve a differential equation, sometimes you're doing something with a differential equation that you don't need to solve. But if you are being asked to solve the equation, it has to be what's called a separable differential equation. And what that means is that you are able to get everything with an X on one side, everything with a Y on the other, where the dx is being multiplied by the thing with the x and the dy is being multiplied by everything with a y. So that's not really something that you necessarily need to worry about. Just know that if you are being asked to solve it, it is possible to solve it. If you are being asked to do something else with it, it is possible that you will not be able to solve the differential equation. So for this one, what it means by to solve a differential equation is to solve for y. So this one is saying find all functions y that satisfy this equation. So what you're going to do is separate the, um, the variables. So I am going to move the dx over to the other side because I want everything with an x on one side, everything with a y on the other. So I leave the dy over here. And then I have 3x squared plus cosine x dx. And in order to solve for y, I need to take the antiderivative of both sides. Because on this side, I'm going to be taking the antiderivative with respect to y. On this side, I'm going to be taking the antiderivative with respect to x. So this one, when you're taking it with respect to y, when the integrand is just 1, the antiderivative of that is y. And technically, it does have a plus c, but this side is also going to have a plus c. So usually in these problems, we just ignore one of the plus c's and we just include it on one side. If you include it on both, it's not wrong. It's just an extra step that you're going to have to do because you are going to have to solve for y. Um, you can combine them into one into one constant, just remember that this plus C is going to be different than this plus C, so they don't cancel. So if you aren't given any more information than what we have here, then you do need a plus C in your answer. So on this side, I'm going to integrate with respect to X. So this one is going to be X cubed, X cubed. Um, antiderivative of cosine is sign. Be really careful with the positives and negatives. Uh, it's really easy to get those confused. The derivative of cosine is negative, but the antiderivative is positive. And then we do have a plus c. So if it doesn't give you any more information, then again, your answer is going to have a plus c. So that's why it says find all functions. So this is all of them because that c could be anything. So a first order differential equation um, that's what you guys are going to be dealing with if you have to solve. So the, um, if the first order differential equation is continuous, the only additional information you need in order to find a unique solution instead of all solutions is an initial condition. So you need to be given a point. So a differential equation with an initial condition is called an initial value problem. 
So that's just something to be aware of that sometimes you see the questions worded where it says solve this initial value problem. That's what it's that that's what it means. It's it's a problem that's giving you an initial condition. If the differential equation has a unique solution, it's called the particular solution. So that's another way that the question could be worded. It could be asking you to find a particular solution to the differential equation. So we're going to go through this initial value problem. So I'm going to start the same way I did the other one. I'm going to separate the variables so that all the x's are on one side, all the y's are on the other. So for this, that just means multiplying by um, dx. So I have dy e to the 2x minus 3x dx. And then I take the antiderivative of both sides. So both examples we've done so far um, this one, the integrand is just one, so be aware that that's not always the case, and you may need to actually take an antiderivative and then do something more with the equation in order to solve for y. But the goal with these problems is to solve for y. So here, I already have y, so there's no moving of anything that I'm going to need to do. Then this one, the side I take the antiderivative, so this one's going to be e to the 2x over 2. And this one is going to be 3x squared over 2 plus c. And then I plug the point in that they give me in order to solve for c. So I'm plugging in 1 for x and 1 half for y. So this is going to be e to the 2 over 2 minus 3 halves plus c. So I just move all of this stuff over to the other side, which is going to end up when I combine this with that, it's going to be 2. And then that I can't really do anything with. So e to the e squared over 2. So it's okay to leave it like that. You don't need to plug that into the calculator and um, figure out the decimal that it equals. We can leave it as an exact answer. And that is the C value, but make sure that you actually answer the question, which is to find the particular solution. So that's y equals. So I need to plug the C value back in. Um, 3x squared over 2 plus 2 minus e squared over 2. That would be your particular solution. So here is a multiple choice question that you have. So it's asking the same thing that the other one was. So again, I separate the variables. Oops. dy equals x squared dx integrate both sides, so we get y equals x cubed over 3 plus c. And this is worded a little bit weird. Uh, normally you see this as f of 0 instead of y of 0, or you see it listed as a point, but this means that I'm plugging in 0 for x and um, 4 for y. So for this one, the c value because I'm plugging in 0 for x, the c value is going to be 4. So I get x cubed over 3 plus 4. And it's asking for y of 2. So this one is not asking for um, what the particular solution is. So then what I need to do is plug 2 in for x. And when you do that and simplify, you should be getting... So remember that if it's a multiple choice question, obviously you need to simplify. If it's not a multiple choice question, you can plug in 2 and you can leave it as 8 thirds plus 4. But you should practice the simplifying because it does occasionally happen in problems like this. Okay, so then something like this. Change the color so you can see it. Um, so still an initial... Uh, initial value problem, so it's giving you an initial condition. This one we do need to use the fundamental theorem to solve, but I'm going to start the same way. So it's, this is a different notation, so it's giving me f prime, that's dy dx equals cosine of x squared. I need to separate the variables, integrate both sides. The only thing with this one is this integral you can't do. So um, even if you took a, b, you were not taught how to do this one. And this one, actually, you will not learn in this class how to find the antiderivative of this. 
you can do it if it's a definite integral, but you cannot do it if it's an indefinite integral because you don't know the techniques in order to find an antiderivative. So that's what it means by using the fundamental theorem. So this one we can, it's gonna be y, but this one what we wanna do is use the point that they're giving us. Um, so they're use, giving us the initial condition is three, so that's gonna be your lower bound here. And then here we wanna use any variable other than x. We don't wanna use x because x is already used here. If we use x here, then we just wanna change the variable in the integrand. x squared dx. And we wanna add in that initial condition, so it's gonna be plus five. So um, where this is coming from, so the, the fundamental theorem of calculus says that f of t minus f of three is gonna equal the integral from three to t cosine squared dx. So because we know f of three is five, I'm just adding that over. So that's why there's a plus five right here. So to check your answer, if you took the derivative of both sides here, the five is gonna go away because you have, because you're taking the derivative of a constant. And then here, when you're taking the antiderivative or the derivative of an antiderivative, you would just plug that in and the constant at the, in the lower bound of integration doesn't matter. So that's one way to check your answer. Um, what you wanna be careful with, with a problem like this, if you don't have the dx, this is wrong. So you don't usually lose points if you have the, if you don't have the dx. It's a really good habit to get into to have it, but if you don't, you're not going to lose points. But without it, I'll show you what that looks like. So if you don't have a dx, it's now unclear what your integrand is. It's unclear whether you mean this or you mean this. So you want to be really careful with the dx. You want to make sure you have it. If you don't think that you would have, if you don't think that you're gonna to remember to have the dx, if you did this, if you put the five in front, now it's correct. So you would not lose points for not having the dx here, even though technically it should be this. But now without the dx, it is clear that you mean this is the only thing you're taking the antiderivative of, and then you're adding five to that answer. So just be really careful. Sometimes I put it over here, I'm in the habit of doing the dx because I've taught this class so many times, but if you don't think that you're gonna to remember to do that, then put any constant that you're adding in front of the integral. So the rest of 6.1 has what's called slope fields and Euler's method, and I am going to save that for the next video. So it's still 6.1, but it's, it's kind of a little bit of a different topic than this. So I'm going to separate that and put that in the next video.